The Bristol Type 167 Brabazon was a bold British attempt to redefine long-haul air travel in the post-World War II era. It was envisioned as a luxury transatlantic airliner, developed under Air Ministry Specification 244 and born from the recommendations of the Brabazon Committee, a government body formed in 1942 at the direction of Prime Minister Winston Churchill. The committee, chaired by aviation pioneer Lord Brabazon of Terra, sought to define Britain's future in civil aviation amid fears of American dominance. Work on the Brabazon began in 1943 when the Bristol Aeroplane Company adapted its large bomber studies, particularly the Type 159, into a civil transport concept to fulfill the Type 1 requirement, a massive aircraft to carry 100 passengers across the Atlantic in high comfort. Leading the design was Leslie George Fries, later replaced in 1946 by Archibald Russell, who would also become instrumental in Concorde's development. The final design, published in November 1944, pushed the boundaries of aircraft engineering. The Brabazon had a wingspan of 230 feet, 70.1 meters, making it one of the largest aircraft ever built at the time. Its fuselage stretched 177 feet, 54 meters, and measured an impressive 25 feet, 7.6 meters in diameter, wider than a modern Boeing 747. This massive body accommodated two full-length decks, allowing for spacious seating and luxury amenities. Power came from eight Bristol Centaurus 18-cylinder radial engines, each generating 2,650 horsepower. These engines were arranged in pairs within the wings, each pair driving a set of contra-rotating propellers through a complex gearbox system. The aircraft's structure was heavy, with an empty weight exceeding 130,000 kilograms, and it carried up to 62,000 liters of fuel for long transatlantic flights. The Brabazon was designed with comfort rather than capacity in mind. Instead of fitting 300 passengers, the layout supported only 60 in luxury, with sleeping berths, a cinema, bar, dining areas, and lounges. The prototype, registered GAGPW, first flew on 4th September 1949, piloted by Bill Pegg and co-piloted by Walter Gibb. Thousands watched the takeoff from Filton Airfield, which had been extended with an 8,000-foot runway to accommodate the aircraft's enormous size. Over its career, the prototype completed 164 flights and accumulated 382 hours in the air. Though displayed at major aviation events like the Farnborough Air Show and the Paris Air Show, the Brabazon's operational performance was disappointing. Its cruising speed of 260 miles per hour, 420 kilometers per hour, was slower than American competitors, and its cost per seat mile was far higher. Plans for a second prototype, the Brabazon Mark II, included a new power plant, the Bristol Proteus turboprop. This version was expected to cruise at 330 miles per hour, 530 kilometers per hour, and reduce London, New York travel time to 12 hours. However, development delays and reliability issues with the Proteus engine eventually stalled the Mark II project. Despite its commercial failure, the Brabazon left behind an influential legacy. The enormous assembly hall built at Filton to accommodate its construction was the largest in the world at the time. It was later used to build the Bristol Britannia and ultimately the Concorde. Moreover, the Brabazon introduced several pioneering aviation technologies. It was the first aircraft equipped with 100% powered flying controls, allowing precise handling of its massive control surfaces. The Brabazon also featured electric engine control systems and advanced high-pressure hydraulics for key systems. One of its standout innovations was a gust alleviation system, using sensors on the nose to detect and respond to turbulence automatically. Furthermore, Bristol introduced revolutionary manufacturing techniques including custom machined skin panels and rivet sealing methods, which saved considerable weight and improved structural efficiency. By 1952, with no commercial or military interest and mounting costs, the British government canceled the project. Minister of Supply Duncan Sandys officially announced its termination on the 17th of July, 1953. The prototype was scrapped that October, sold for just 10,000 pounds, Yet the infrastructure, knowledge, and techniques developed during the Brabazon project propelled British aviation forward, influencing future aircraft and helping maintain Britain's role in global aerospace engineering. 
The Brabazon remains a symbol of visionary ambition and a lesson in aligning innovation with market realities.